BSD with you. Tutorial on gaming. Ghost BSD 20 or 2 overview. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. One of the great things about GhostBSD and FreeBSD in general is that it doesn't change its installation method from release to release. There is a new addition to the installation of GhostBSD 2002 and that's this partition editor for ZFS. But that's not the only change. I mean, this is just a point release, but there are quite a few changes here. They've added the force upgrade all packages to the upgrade station, improved update station update progress so you can see what's going on better, improved update station tray icon behavior, it used to go a little bit funny now and then. Added Power D by default for laptop battery performance. And added custom ZFS partition editor, which I showed you earlier. There's been a few bug fixes and features added since the last release. Update station doesn't fail update when PKG upgrade fails. Host name definition has been improved. Xconfig display now shows the correct NVIDIA version. It was using the latest one, but showing an earlier one, so uh, that did confuse some people. Telegram application is installed on the desktop by default. Like I said, this isn't an in-depth uh, review of 2002, um, because I, you know, not that much has changed on the actual desktop since 2001, which I did a review of. But this is really just to show you that it's, it's the same, and they make incremental improvements every release, which is a great thing because you know that it's going to be stable and, and it will do the things that you want it to do rather than breaking everything on every new release as some um, other operating systems might do. So if you've seen a review of GhostBSD 2001, which I did last time, everything I said there applies to this. But I'll give you a quick look around anyway. Okay, we'll have a look at the uh, memory usage on first boot using top. It works slightly different to uh, Linux top, so the figures might be different, but it's telling me there that at this moment, active memory is only 44 megabytes. So at this moment, it's only using 44, which is pretty cool. There's 268 megabytes, which is inactive, and it's there if you need it, but it's not being used. So 44 is actually active. Quite a lightweight desktop, actually. And we'll have a look at the we'll have a look at the menus. What do you get out of the box on this? I've not added anything extra. Everything what you see is what it comes on the ISO. So you've got character map, uh, archive manager, uh, files, make calculator, a font viewer, search tool, plank, pluma, and a screenshot tool. Education, you've got LibreOffice Math. Graphics, I have made. LibreOffice Draw, make color selection and shot well. Firefox, Telegram, Thunderbird and Transmission. Atrial Document Viewer, LibreOffice, LibreOffice Base. It's the full LibreOffice suite and make dictionary at the bottom. You've got Brazero, Rhythmbox, uh, sound Util and VLC. You've got Casio, Deconf and Log File Viewer. Just the usual thing to help you monitor the system. We'll have a look at the, actually this one. And as you see, what it's showing you, like I said earlier about the way that top measures memory different, the Mate Memory Resource Manager will show you the aggregated amount. Well, the actual real amount is only 64 megabytes, so. It just shows you how much of a lightweight system Mate can be on top of a BSD OS. And we're using version 1.22.2, which I think is the latest one. And there's the processors. Not too bad, actually. And the file system. We simplified boot on this one. And there's your places. You've got home folder, desktop, computer, network. Connect to server, search tool, and recent documents. 
your preferences. Now, all these individual preferences can be found in the control center anyway, but you know, you've got your hardware displays and keyboard and network proxies, look and feel, etc. But we'll, uh, we'll have a look down and then go back to the control center. And you've got help, about, lock screen, log out and shut down. Uh, on the desktop itself, you've got a volume, ethernet and updates available. Very nice. And calendar. There you go. And at the bottom, you've got uh, show all desktops. Then you've got your virtual desktops there. So it's all pretty standard stuff. Let's go back down to the uh, control center. Right, we'll have a look at the control center. It's pretty standard, really. You've got two custom items, um, not pretty, not two there, for Ghost PSD, but the rest are pretty much standard. Uh, let's have a look what starts up uh, when you uh, power up. Not too bad. It's probably why it's uh, quite lightweight. There's not that many things there. And, right, let's have a look. For those who may be interested, here's the selection of wallpapers that you get. All very nice nature inspired shots and uh, pretty much standard what you get with Ghost PSD. It's easy to add your own extras if you want some more. And I'm just going to alter the uh, text, make it look better. I'm going to speed through this bit. Because I'm zoomed in, it doesn't show it its full glory, but it does look a bit better. Right, well, this was only a very quick overview. Um, there were a few changes between the last release, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do a, a repeat review on a, a point release every time. But the, as an overview, well, you know, this is Ghost BSD. It's like I said last time. It's it's reached a pretty high position uh, in usability and almost near perfect. I think, um, <laughs> this is, I mean, it's really different. It's good and bad, this, because w what it means is that um, because it's, they've done such a fantastic job on this already, that each new release, uh, unless they do something fundamentally uh, radical, is going to appear to be... Um, Boring, and I, and I don't mean that in a derogative manner, in a, in a derogative way. It's boring because it's so well done. Each release is stable. Each release is polished. The things that they can do is fix bugs and um, add features that improve usability. And and I think that particular methodology really could be learned by some other operating system makers who, even on point releases introduce radical new things which break the user experience and you really shouldn't be doing that you know each release unless it's a major version bump up i suppose but even then you know each point release should be a gradual incremental improvement so much so that the user really if you put them in front of two or three computers each one going up by that point release really couldn't tell that much difference between them. You're not going to sit down and think, oh, whoa, whoa, what's this? What have you done? Why have you moved that there? None of that's going to happen. It's going to be, oh, yeah, we know it. We know how to use it. Let's get on with some work. And I think Ghost PSD is, uh, and the developers in particular, they, they understand this. They know not to break it. And that's the FreeBSD philosophy anyway. You know, the FreeBSD moves very slowly in that regard. Some people want the latest technologies, and they come from the perhaps the Linux uh, world, and they think, oh, you know, some of your software is out of date. Which it, which it isn't, but they perceive it to be because they're not using the bleeding edge. But they, they fail to understand that at the end of the day, you know, you've got to get work done on your operating system. So yeah, so GhostBSD is, um, they're doing what they do and they're doing what they do best. I can't really add much more to what I've said previously on other releases that it's a very polished operating system. It shows you what FreeBSD can achieve. Uh, the user friendliness and user experience is as good as it always has been. One particular aspect which of GhostBSD which uh, came to light to me recently was uh, just how approachable the, the developers are. Um, Eric, Eric BSD, over on the, um, the GhostBSD forums, is, is, is really uh, is a great guy. 
He's very. He'll answer your questions. He'll if you suggest anything or something, for, he'll he'll embrace it. He's not arrogant. There are some developers who can be slightly arrogant and distant, but he's he's none of them things. He's a great guy. So you know, if you're using Ghost PST and you need any help or queries, give him a shout and he'll get back to you. So brilliant. So yeah, this is just a quick overview and give it a whirl. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.